Hey guys, in this video, I want to walk you through the main software that I use in my PhD. I'm doing a PhD in electrical engineering. I'm in my last year and my PhD topic is on satellite communications. So my goal is to make satellites talk to each other faster. And the approach I am taking um, along with my PhD advisor, obviously, who helped me choose this topic is to go to higher frequencies. So we are working on above 100 gigahertz communications between satellites and seeing if that's able to increase the data rates. Now, if you have no idea what any of this means, don't worry, I'm gonna be explaining it along the video as I walk you through the software that I use. And there's three main softwares that I use. First one is an electromagnetic solver or an EMAG solver. Um, and it's basically like a simulator of electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic structures. Second one is just like a general purpose programming language slash very complicated calculator with a user interface. You might already guess what that is. And third is just a tool that helps document results and progress that I make throughout my PhD and help put it in really organized documents that I can publish. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you what that is. Um, before I do that, let me give you some context. So most of my research is on antenna design. It's on general communication systems and on antenna design as well. So it might help if I just give you a quick overview of my what my PhD is about so you understand why I use the software that I use. So this right here is just a brief outline of my PhD. This is essentially my PhD in one page. And what I work on is again, terahertz space communication, which is essentially just satellites communicating in the terahertz band, terahertz band being like uh, above 100 gigahertz, because if you go higher up in frequency, you increase your bandwidth, which means you can increase your data rate. So as the whole hypothesis behind my research is we're trying to have higher data rates in space. We're trying to have something like even better than Starlink, like even uh, like really high data rates in space. And this is my proposed way of doing it. So if I were to describe my PhD, somebody who doesn't know what I'm doing, I would say, hey, I'm working on terahertz technology and I'm trying to develop it for space. And this is some of the, comp the competitive technologies, microwave, millimeter wave. I would, and then I work on uh, in, in space specifically. So I have to understand a little bit of orbits, constellation design. Uh, but then these two, part A and part B, are really the two main chapters of my PhD, uh, where one works on terahertz system architecture, um, and then the other one works on antenna design. So if you notice in this case, I've designed a couple antennas, I've designed a beam steering deployment method, I've designed a circulator, and then going forward, I'll need to do some more antenna design, but then some more modeling as well. And the software I use for antenna design is called Altair Fico. And I really like the software. Actually, my license just expired, so I can't really open it up uh, and show you how to actually design antennas. I'll probably make a future video about that. But it's essentially a really cool software where you essentially like build structures and uh, you get to simulate how the waves coming out of these structures will behave. In this case, like uh, this is simulating what would happen. Uh, like in this case, like a ship, this is some type of dish antenna of some sort. This is like assuming you hold a phone next to your head, what that radiation would look like. Um, if you're um, trying to design anything related to electromagnetics, um, I really like Altair Fico. Another one is called ANSYS HFSS. This one's really good as well. However, I like Fico more because um, it has different types of solvers that are usually much, much faster and it's a lot more user-friendly, the GUI. Um, there's also Microwave CST, but I believe that that one is a time domain solver. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. I'll make future videos explaining all these technical details. So. I use Altair Fico to take care of my antenna designs, which is essentially like um, this half of my PhD. Um, but then for the first half, I use um, MATLAB, which is uh, the most amazing ever programming language. And yes, I say that on purpose to trigger some of the people in software that say MATLAB is not a programming language uh, because I, I don't even know why. Um, it's, in theory, it's like a calculator that's like really, really advanced on steroids, had a really nice GUI. Uh, but the reason I refer to it as a programming language is because uh, it's, it has its own syntax, has its own libraries, frameworks, toolboxes, and it's essentially like its own thing. Plus the added benefit of having probably the nicest uh, user interface out of like anything else you could really use uh, because like you can write your code very easily. Uh, you see all your variables next to you all the time. You see where your document stands with respect to the other directory. Uh, and you even have a nice command window where you can like call on uh, functions or you can uh, like directly interface with the scripts that you write, or you don't even have to do that. You can just do something totally random. Like in this case, for example, I know that I have some value, um, I don't know, like Lambda two. So if I la type Lambda two and I'm curious what that is, MATLAB will tell me that, hey, this is a pre-registered value. Um, so this command window is nice because that allows me to interface and call functions onto the scripts, but I could do something totally different. Like I could define like some X value, 
some y value and then just do x plus y and then essentially this is me just using it as like a kind of calculator of some sort um so i i, I really really like matlab because not only can you just have super nice user-friendly um way of, 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 of doing calculations, uh, the plotting functions in MATLAB is amazing. Like in this case, I'm trying to plot. So I just define some variables. Um, I write some equations and this is some very horribly written code. I think I wrote this like three years ago, but it's a very simple example that I want to show you to get the point across. And bam, I, I get all of a sudden a really nice looking figure um, and I can change the colors. I can change what the legend looks like. I can change what the axes look like. And the nice thing is I don't need to only hard code that. Like if you're doing this in like Python or a different uh, language, you would kind of need to write, like first borrow some library for plotting and then uh, call uh, like hard code specifically what you want your axes to look like, what you want your fonts to look like. And, and now that you don't, yes, you can, you can do that. But even if like when your plot comes out and you want to change how it looks like, uh, there's this export setup that allows you to kind of play around with the presentation um, and for example, you could you could you could change what the fonts look like. You could change the sizes and whatnot using a, a user interface, which is super nice and super user friendly. Like in this case, let's say I am trying to change what the plot looks like. I want to make um, make it a little nicer. Like I can make the lines thicker. I can make the numbers a bit more visible. I can move this guy around, um, and then I can take this and export it as like whatever type I want. Um, I think for electrical engineers, it's really nice to have user interfaces. And most of the software electrical engineers use has user interfaces. And that just makes life a lot easier because you can kind of play around uh, with things much quicker because at the end of the day, like software is one of the things that we do, but it's not everything that we do. So ideally uh, with like really nice GUIs, softwares with good GUIs uh, usually always um, have a very special place in my heart since they make life a lot easier and just make it quicker to do the actual electrical engineering um, and physics. Uh, this is another example I want to show you guys of just how simple this can be. There's a, uh, a function that essentially just helps you design an optimized uh, horn, pyramid horn. If you don't know what a pyramid horn is, it looks something like this. It's basically an antenna that looks like a horn. And you basically start with like some signals here fed through like a waveguide. And then the waves kind of propagate and then they propagate into free and space. And this length over here is designed and optimized in such a way to make the antenna as efficient as possible to make the waves actually propagate in the direction you want at minimal losses. Um, and this is basically what this function does. So all you're essentially, all you're doing is you're defining a frequency, a wavelength, and you're, you're defining uh, what your um, waveguide size looks like. So this like rectangular waveguide, A, B, you're defining that. And then you're defining some antenna gain. In this case, this is in decibels. And then you're telling the function, hey, give me the, the, the size of the flare. In this case, this is called a flare based on um, these things over here. And there's a separate function that, for example, calculates the antenna beam width. Now that you've calculated gain, you want to figure out like how wide, um, like the waves coming out of this horn, how wide um, it's actually spreading. And again, it's very simple. Like when you comment things out, like, like it's just, it's just a, such a beautiful thing to work with. I, I absolutely love MATLAB. Um, and then finally, um, once I actually make some plots in MATLAB and design some antennas in FICO um, or like HFSS or another software, what we use then to actually write papers and publish them is called Overleaf. And I love this software because instead of writing things in like Microsoft Word and having them get like really messy, uh, this is such a super organized way to write research papers. Um, because as you can see on the right, you have a PDF that see, looks very neat. Look at how nice this graph looks with the spacing and the, the figure, the description, the captions. Look at how neat your uh, equations look like. And then when you scroll all the way down, you can see that there's like references that are nicely spaced out, acknowledgements and whatnot. And the reason this looks super beautiful is because of just this very organized um, way of writing it where instead of just kind of spacing things out manually like you would in Microsoft Word, uh, you would kind of group things into like sections and tables and, and graphs. And, and, and for example, like, let me just show you like equations, you would write equations in a certain way. And this overleaf, and, and this, this is an online version of LaTeX. I think LaTeX um, is the original one where you have to like download it on your computer. Um, and in this case, this shows you the like a table. Um, and just again, it, it's a, 
it, it looks a bit messy here when you hard code it, but this is the reason that like it looks super organized and flows really nice uh, as a PDF. And then you can export this out um, and, and then you submit it as you save it as a PDF and then you export it out and you submit it. Um, and I, I really think without Overleaf, like writing papers would suck. Uh, but thanks to Overleaf, like writing papers is abs absolutely amazing. Now, if you're curious about some of my research papers, um, you can actually check them out. I could leave a link here below um, of where I have them listed. But on our lab website, we actually have our papers listed with their PDFs as well. So if you click on my page um, and you scroll down in the publications, you will see that there's a PDF for each one of them. For example, this one, this, I think this is the first ever paper uh, I published in my PhD program and it won Best Paper at Word. And as you can see, it looks super nice, organized, the figures look nice, it's very structured, the equations look nice, and the tables look nice, and everything just looks look very, very nice. Uh, uh, and, and all of this is thanks to Overleaf. Uh, so if you plan on writing research papers, I urge you do not use uh, Microsoft Word or like don't like uh, or uh, like, like to use Overleaf, use LaTeX. It's, it's going to come out to be more organized, uh, simpler. The learning curve is going to be hard at first, but I promise it'll pay off uh, in the long term. Now I know that I spoke a lot on antennas, and actually on this channel I have uh, recorded a lecture from when I was teaching at Xavier University, explaining how antennas work, what antennas are, and I think I only do it in thirty minutes. So within thirty minutes, you could get really good at antennas. And I think, I actually think you should really watch that. You'll probably learn a lot from it. Uh, I will put it in a video. It should show up, show up over here. Uh, so you should go ahead and click on that. Peace, love.